2 Samuel 6. <clears throat> Again, David gathered together all the children, the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Bailey of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God. So the ark of God is not in uh, Jerusalem. It's this place called Baal. And David's like, okay, I've been settled as king. We've got the entire nation together under me. Let's bring the ark to Jerusalem. Nothing wrong with that idea. So from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, that dwelleth between the cherubim. And that's the mercy seat, and that's the place of heaven where God is in the in the in the creatures, Revelation 4. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart. Now we're in trouble. Let's go back to 1 Samuel 6 7. We're in trouble. It's a new car. First Samuel six seven. Now these are the Philistines. After they've been plagued because of the ark, and their priests, the Philistine priests of Dagon, probably, or other gods, maybe Asherah. Now therefore make a new cart that's the first time again cart shows up and take two milk kind in which there has no uh, has come no yoke and tie the kind to the cart and bring the, their calves home with them and take the ark of the lord and lay it upon the cart and put the jewels of gold which he returned him for a trespass offering in the coffer by the side thereof and send it away and it may go and see if it goes up by the way of his own coast to Bethlehem. Then he has done us this great evil. But if not, then we shall know that it was not his hand that smote us. It was a chance that happened to us. And the men did so and took the two milk kind and tied them to the cart and shut up their calves at home. They laid the ark of the Lord upon the... Now look what's happening here. They laid the ark of the Lord upon the cart. They are touching that ark. That's an important fact for when we get to our study today. And the coffer with the mice of gold and the images of their emeralds. And the king took the straight way through the way of Bethlehem and went along the highway, lowing as they went and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. And the lords of the Philistines went after them unto the border of Bethlehem. And then the ark on this cart is carried to the children of Israel. Now God allowed this cart to be done by the Philistines. Because there's no other way for the Philistines to do it. And they're wanting to do right. It doesn't belong here. The Philistines don't know well enough, you know, go get the priest. Have them come and carry it. But David, Numbers chapter 4, who has the law. He's a new king on the throne and the bible writes numbers four one we'll look at the bible writes in the law to the kings they were to write their own law they were to write their own copy of the scriptures and as david would be right in the scriptures he would come across numbers chapter four and would have been numbers four but he would come to this part in numbers in numbers four verse one and the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, To both Moses and Aaron, take the son of the take the sum of the sons of Kohath from among the sons of Levi, after their families by the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, even unto fifty years old, all that enter into the host to do the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. So, of the ch children of Levi, here is Kohath set apart. There are three children of Levi, Kohath, Marari, and I forget the other one. So here's Kohath. 
This shall be the service of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the congregation about the most holy thing. That would be the ark. And when the camp set forth, Aaron shall come and his sons, and they shall take down the covering veil and cover the ark of the testimony with it. So that veil that Jesus Christ rent in the holy place, the most holy place, that is taken down and is put in over the ark. No one ever sees the ark. They see the veil. And shall put there in the covering of badger skin. Goes over that. And shall spread it over a cloth holy of blue. And shall put in the staves thereof. Upon the table of showbread they shall say the same thing. Put packing everything up. In the holy place. And verse number 14. And they shall put it upon all the vessels therein. Wherein they minister about it. Even the censers, the fresh hooks, the shovels, the basins, and all the vessels of the altar. That's the brazen altar. They shall spread upon a covering of badger skin and put the stake. Everything, all the furniture in that ark, I mean, in that tabernacle, is covered by the curtains, by the veil. And when Aaron and his sons had made an end of covering the sanctuary, and all the vessels in the sanctuary, as the camp is to set forward. All right, we're on the move. After that, the sons of Kohath shall come to bear it. But they shall not touch, important, any holy thing, lest they die. These things are the burden of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle and congregation. Their, one of their duties of, the, of the, all the furniture was to carry that ark on their shoulders. That ark is covered by the veil. If anybody were to touch it, they're to die. You say, what about the Philistines? They didn't know any better. But when we get into this story here, David ought to know better. He was to write a copy of his own law, the law said. So back in verse 6, I mean chapter 6, verse 3, <clears throat> they set the ark of God on a new cart. They didn't put it on the Kohite's shoulders. If it's good enough for the Philistines, it's good enough for us. Can I go ahead and say it? Or should I just keep going? We got to change the VBS every year. We got to have a new thing. I mean, if it worked for that church down the street, it sure will work for us. And you're using the means of the Philistines. And God said, okay, it may have been good there. It may be good for the world, but it ain't good for me. God. David thought we got the new, we get the best, we get the new improvements. And God says, I am not taking that new. You better get back to the old. Jeremiah says, search and go back to the old way. You better get rid of all this junk and get the old-fashioned King James Bible and a wooden pulpit and preach the hell fire to the people. Never mind this junk and crap you got today in the church. You ought to know with face painting that the only face painting mentioned in the Bible is Jezebel. New car is not accepted and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, that's where it was, that was in Gibra. And Uzzah and Ohio, the sons of Abinadab, dragged the new cart. That's something the Philistines didn't do. The Philistines said, listen, get two mother cows, milk cows. They just had calves, tied their calves up. Let the calves be guided by God. And if it's God that's given us his emeralds, if it's God that's plagued us, he will guide that back to where it belongs. If not, they go somewhere else, they go out and then it was by chance. But you've got two animals, two oxen, and on those oxen or next to those oxen are these two men, Uzzah and Ohio, guiding. It ought to have been on the, on the shoulders of the priest. And they brought it out of the house of Benadab, which was at Gibna, accompanying, that's the only place that word shows up, the Ark of God. David has great intentions. God said he will settle himself in a city. And we are now starting to see, yet David, I don't know if he knows yet. That city is Jerusalem, but let's bring, David said, let's bring that ark closer to where I am since God's with me. 
They brought it out of the house of Benedad, which is at Gibna, accompanying the ark of God, and Ohio, Ohio, went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel played, well, don't you play at BBS? Before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, first time fir shows up. Even on harps, first time harp shows up. On salt trees and trimbles and on coronets, first time that word shows up. And on cymbals, fir, harps, coronets, and cymbals is the first time. That's what they're playing. They're not playing games. They're not doing stupid things. They are breaking the instruments out and the way David is, when we look at the study of David, he ain't just calling amateurs out. He's calling people who are known and practiced and will do well before God. And he's got the orchestra going for God. But he's got that new car. And when they came to Nechon, Nechon, Threshing floor. Threshing floors are bad places in the Bible. And usually bad events. Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it. What did Numbers say? Anybody would have touched that. And the ox for the oxen shook it. Shook is the first time that word showed up. A lot of first time words in this chapter. They're going along the ground, whatever happened, that ark. And us is like, oh, would you think that's good intentions? I think there are good intentions out there with these new things in the churches, but they're not approved by God. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against us. And God smote him there for his error. And that's the first time error shows up. God says an error, but that's not, it's still wrong. I'm still angry. Scriptures say don't touch it. You touched it. Scriptures say put it on the sons of, on the shoulders of the priests. They didn't do that. This was strike two. And there he died by the ark of God. And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. And he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah. Now that Perez, you run back to Genesis 38 or not, that means breach. That's that child that was born of a breach. In the Hebrew, Perez means breach. To this day. So there's a place where Uzzah died. God made a breach. No, you didn't do it right, David. You did not look into the scriptures. You did not seek the Levites. You didn't ask somebody, how do we do this? Oh, I got an idea. Let's do something new. And a man died. With good intentions, a man died. And you didn't get the job done. I mean, that's the scriptures, that's black and white. He called the place Perazza to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day. So it brought fear, it did something good. And said, how shall the ark of the Lord come to me? Uh, now let's look at the scripture. Now that someone's died. All right, let's open up and see what we're supposed to do. So David would not remove the ark, of the, the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David. But David carried it aside unto the house of Obed-Edom, the Gilead. The Lord's lying, all right, just don't drop it here. Bring it to this guy's house. And I guarantee they're not playing the musical instruments anymore. They're not playing anymore. They're seeking God. They're praying to God for God's mercy. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom the Giddite three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. All right, here comes the ark. It's right there in his household. And God is just wonderfully blessing him. You see, so you see where people get the idea, oh, if I can get something of God in my house, knick-knack, fatty-wag, God's going to give me a bone. 
You're stealing that out of the Bible. Yes, the Ark of the Lord had something to it with God's presence. Nothing else ever in the world has anything to do like the Ark of God. That's why they made movies about the thing. If anybody can get a hold of the Ark of God, how great things would be. The Bible says in Revelations it's in heaven. The only way you're going to find the Ark of God is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And you will see it in heaven. Revelation. And it was told King David, look at King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obadiah. Oh, David, you don't believe that guy. Man, he's, it's all coming to him. Everything is great in that house now. The cattle are making more cows. The lambs are making all kinds of wool. His crops are great. His family is great. And all that pertaineth unto him. Because of the ark of God. So David went and brought the ark of God from the house of Obed. He's doing so great. Every single one. Get it out of there. Get it out of there. It's not for one house. It's for all the nation of Israel. Like the, that Passover night. That lamb wasn't just for one house. It's to be for all the children of Israel. We can't have one man with good fortune. We've got to have the whole nation of good fortune by God. And out of the house of Obedeen unto the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they when they that bear the ark, what's that they? That's the priest. It's not the cows or the oxen or asses. That's the priest. Why is it why does it about because the scripture said already written to David what he was supposed to do, and it just shows David is following the scriptures now. They, those are the priests. That bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces. The only place that word shows up. So they walked six paces with the ark on their shoulders. And he, David, sacrificed oxen and fatlings. Man, this is great. This is wonderful. Let's stop. Got to sacrifice a cow. Oxen. I wonder if there's even the oxen that carried. But I don't know. David danced before the Lord with all his might. And this dance man, he's just glorifying God. He's just happy in the Lord. He ain't dancing with a woman that's not his wife, though he's got many wives. He's not dancing with a woman he don't know. He's not, he's just dancing for God. The music playing again. And David was girded with a linen ephod. That's a priest. That's the priest garments. They're dealing with the ark of God and David is wearing the priest garment. Why? Because he's got that office of the priest. That God has allowed him. David is one of the few that has the office of the priest, king, and prophet. Saul tried to get this office of priest and God said, no, you're done. You're gone. You're a king and you're a prophet. That's it. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark. Of the Lord was shouting. That's the first time that word showed. Isn't that funny? People come up, you're too loud. Man, they are shouting. They are hoot hollering. Hosanna, good glad the ark is coming. Where is this ark coming into? It's coming to the city of David. What's the city of David? It's Jerusalem. What is this? This picture is Jesus Christ coming in, his triumphal entry on that ass. Where the people are shouting, Hosanna. Who is the ass that he's riding on? These two priests. What's the Bible say about an ass? If you don't redeem him with a lamb, you're to break its neck. You're to kill it. Because if he's not going to be redeemed with that lamb, then he's just dead anyway. Isn't that a wonderful picture? Here comes Jesus through the ark. With David dancing and singing. And I bet you all Israel was dancing and playing music instruments. And and, and uh, everything that's going on with David. I bet you that was going on when Jesus came in on that donkey. They were throwing down palm leaves and everything. So David and all the house of Israel brought the ark of the Lord with shouting. Be too loud. Shout. And with the sound of the trumpet. That's a new one added. Trumpet. Dun, dun, dun. 
So what's every movie? What's every king movie? When you got a castle and you got the queen, you got the princess, you got the prince. What is it? Dun, dun, dun. Here comes the trumpets of the Bible. You ever wonder why they did that? The Bible. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, as I said, they are doing archaeological evidence right now. They're finding new things in the city of David. Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping. That's the first time that showed up. And dancing before the Lord. Who? The Lord. And she despised him with all her heart. Her, despised him in her heart. All her heart. That's important. That day, Michael and David, she just, she wouldn't have nothing to do with him no more. Her heart was gone for him. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in his place. His. Oh, I bet you the feminists hate that. I bet the people who don't know what sex they are hate that. His. Masculine. My God's a masculine male. Where would that place be? David built a tabernacle. And in that tabernacle, there was the most holy place. And behind that veil, there was a place set for the ark. It didn't go nowhere else. It didn't go in David's house. It didn't go in the closet. It did not be put out in show. In the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. We're done with Moses' tabernacle. That's gone. We have a tabernacle built by David, set up by David. And this will turn into Solomon's temple. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. Didn't Saul try that? And Samuel showed up and said, God's done with you. You see that? Do you see the office of priesthood of David right there? He is allowed by God to offer an offering that only the priests were to offer. Prophet, priest, and king. <clears throat> and as soon as David had made an end of offering burnt offerings, there he is making it. It's it's him doing it. God allowing him. Let me put my notes here. He's doing it. Marking my Bible. He pressed, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. It would be Jehovah. He dealt among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well to the women as men. So not only the men, but to the women, to everyone a cake of bread. Every person got a cake of bread. And a good piece of flesh. Do you know where you see that in the Bible? Bread and flesh. Jesus feeding the 5,000. There were 5,000 men beside women. That flesh could have been fish. We know it says flesh. Fish is also flesh. And a flagon, first time that word shows up, of wine. Bread and wine isn't at the Lord's Supper. That Christ gave his flesh. John chapter 6. Man, 19 is loaded. And it's for the people. He came on his own, Israel. And they received him not. So all the people departed, everyone to his house. And David returned to bless his household. Going home. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David. Oh, she's, here she comes. David don't know nothing. <laughs> oh, here she comes. Here comes my wife. How you doing, dear? <laughs> and said, how glorious was the king of Israel today, which uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants, as one of the vain fellows, shamelessly, only time that word shows up, shamelessly uncovered himself. Now notice she doesn't say nakedness. I'm going to tell you, I think the Bible knows what nakedness is and from uncoveredness. I don't know. It's not such a big battle we got to do battle about, but 
He's not naked. He just has his what? His linen ephod. What's that? We would call that underwear today. A t-shirt. Your white t-shirt a man wears. And David said to Michael, now here's a prophet. We've seen him as a king. Okay, King David, verse 12. We've seen him in the office of the priests. <clears throat> verse 17. Now we're going to see him a prophet. Verse 21. And David said to Michael, it was before the Lord which chose me before thy father. Ooh, we've let her have it. Your father's done and gone, babe. And before all his house, your father's house is nothing no more. To anoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. Listen, I'm going to be the ruler of Israel. No longer your father. You got an attitude? You got an attitude. I'm going to serve the Lord with joy. And I will let, I will yet be more vile than thus. And will be a base. I will be base. That's the first time that word shows up. In my own sight. In other words, if it's in my sight, if it's clean, I'm going to do it. You see, David right now has a heart for, for the Lord that the Lord said, David after my own heart. He doesn't do that much wrong. He can actually trust himself where we, is, uh, we can't. I can't trust myself as much as David trusts himself. But he says, listen, everything I've done, I've done it for the Lord. It will be clean. If I'm going to do anything that's going to violate God, I will stop before I do that, Michael. And by the way, your family, yeah, 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 yeah. Nina. I'm the king. And it's almost like she came up to him like, you know, you remember who my father was? No, no more. He's gone. And I will yet be more vile than thus, and will be base in my own sight. And of their maid servants, which thou hast spoken of, and of them shall I be, shall I be had in honor. They know who I am. They know how respectable I am. They know I won't go over the edge. You evidently don't know. Now what? Therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no children unto the day of her death, and that would have been of David. And I believe we record that she did have a child. Now, let's go over to 1 Chronicles 15. 1 Chronicles 15, verse 25. We're going to read the same account. We're reading the same account we just read in 2 Samuel 6. And usually it gives us more information. So David and the elders of Israel. All right, we didn't know they were elders in 6. So the main people, the head of the body of Israel said, David, you want to bring up the ark of God? Yes, I do. We agree with you. When Jesus came, the elders, the people in charge did not agree. And the captains over thousands, the military men, went to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the house of Obed-Edom with joy. There's joy. And it came to pass when God helped the Levites that bear the Ark. Remember it said them back there in 2 Samuel 6? 1 Chronicles 15 tells us David got the Levites according to the law. Scripture with Scripture. See, this is past Azeel, dying. It picks up where David has done right now. And the Levites that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, that they offered seven bullocks, who were told how many, and seven rams. And David was called with a robe of fine linen. That was an ephod. What did the priest wear? They rolled an ephod and a robe. David, I almost going to say he's wearing the priestly garments. A fine linen. And all the Levites that bear the ark. And, uh, turn page. I remember that. You said, you said, 
the record play would read the story to you. And then you turn page. And the singer. So see, there are singers there now. They're playing, they're dancing, and they're singing. And Chen and I had the master of the song with singers. So there's a choir there. And they are professionally singing for God, for God. It's not coming up with, with a song, oh, okay, let's give it a shot and see if we can do it. And it's not, no, it's people who want to do it. David also had upon him an ephod of linen. Oh, there it is. There's the ephod. He's wearing a robe and an ephod. What's your problem, Michael? I'll tell you what the problem. The ephod was shown. The robe opened up and there's his teacher. Ah, look how bad you are. You uncovered yourself. No, the robe flew open. That's what happened. And you saw his teacher. So David is wearing the priestly, the robe and the ephod, linen. Thus all Israel brought up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord with shouting. There it is again. With the sound of the coronet. There it is again. And with trumpets, with cymbals, making a noise with psalteries and harps. Make a joyful noise on the Lord, David called in the Psalms. Shout it out. And it came to pass, as the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came to the city of David, that Michael, the daughter of Saul, looking out of the window, saw King David dancing and playing, and she despised him in her heart. So they brought the Ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it. That's David's tent. That's David's And they offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before the Lord, before God. When David had made an end of when David made an end of offering the burnt offering, when David had made an end of offering, there he is. Two places. David's doing the offering. I'm sorry, King Uzziah went in there to offer incense to whatever reason, and he starts getting leprosy. Uzzah touches the ark and he's dead. Uh leave uh Aaron's Two sons, and they have an Abihu go in there with a lighter or something or something that they weren't supposed to go. They're dead. David walks up he, to the altar. He's offering burnt offering, and he walks away from him. Bless God, all Israel. God bless Israel. And he, and he walks home. And he gets a bawling out by his wife. He didn't die. Saul, King Saul, Offers offerings to God. Samuel walks up and says, you're done. You're finished. Bye. I'm going to go anoint David to be king. And that's what anger Saul through his whole life. I know thou will be the king, David. So, pitch for it. And they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before God. And when David had made an end of offering the burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. And he dealt to everyone in every one of Israel, both man and woman, every one a loaf of bread and a good piece of flesh. A good piece of flesh. Not the junk they sell in the grocery store. Man, he gave that good piece, that is the best. That would be the shoulder of the animal. And a flagon of wine. And then he paired to him, he set Levites. He put the Levites and it's going to be into it. He sets a choir. He sets up the, the way who's going to do what and what they're going to do. All according to the scriptures. That's what David does. Uh, one other place in chapter 15. And we got that through this. this we got time. This verse 1. David, David 15. 1. First Chronicles 15. 1. And David made him houses in the city of David and prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched for it a tent. All right, so this is David before he gets the ark. He, that tent is before the ark. All right, I got the tent built. It's ready. Let's go get the ark. And David said, none ought to carry the ark of God but Levites. For then has the Lord chosen to carry the ark of God and minister on him forever. 
You say, well, that doesn't match. Something wrong here. And David gathered all Israel together to Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord unto his place, which he had prepared for it. David assembled the children of Aaron and the Levites. That don't sound like what we read. Of the sons of Koath, Uriah, the, the chief, and he calls a bunch of men. Down to verse 14. Verse 4 to 10 is all the men he called. Verse 14. And David called for Zayach and Abiathar the priest. Those are the high priests. And for the Levites, Uriah, Isaiah, and Joel, Shimla, Eli, and Aminadab. And said unto him, Ye are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Sanctify yourself, set yourself apart, both ye and your brother, that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel unto the place that I have prepared for it. For because ye did it not at the first, the Lord our God made a breach for Oh, does that sound familiar? So chapter 15 is recording the after effect of Uzziah. And when the Bible says that David became afraid of God, David went back to the priest and said, okay, what do we do? That new cart's got to go. Something I did wrong, man. Open up those scriptures and show me. And all these Levites. The breach upon us for that we sought him not after the due order. We did not do it the proper way. We just went and got it, put it on the cart, and started walking. That's not God's way. So the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord of God of Israel. And then we go on with the reading. And the children of Levites bear the ark of God upon their shoulders, with the staves therein, and Mo as Moses commanded the children of Israel. And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be singers, instruments of music, psalteries and harps and cymbals, sounding by lifting up the voice with joy. And then we go into all the singing. David, the first time with that cart, was wrong. And when Uzzah drops dead, the Bible says that David, man, he feared God. And he ran, he ran home. They, they put that ark off to the side. They ran home. David's like, oh. And he probably prayed to God. And he probably went to the Levites, the priest. He's friends with the Abiathar, remember? Abiathar has been traveling him with the wilderness since Saul killed his family. He's been with David the whole time. He's like, Abiathar, Zadok, what did I do wrong? And they pulled the scrolls out and say, David, Numbers said you're supposed to put it on Koath's shoulder. Really? Tell me more. And look at David, chapter 15, that we did not read in Samuel. Look at David doing exactly. And not only that, in chapter 15, David now sets up for God. And when I mean professional, I mean men that want to do it. Men will give their heart to sing and do instruments of music for God and God only. Not none of this, you know, they put a CD in and do karaoke. None of this, oh, okay, I've got to sing 425. None of that. David and the Levites put their heart into serving God. And you will see that by David's life. You will see that by what's going on in Israel. So David's a wonderful character. 